the reason why uh, we had to shift gears to Shopify was we literally broke WordPress, like broke it. <laughs> awesome. It's time for another episode of the Cold Star Project, the podcast about the unexpected challenges of scaling, and the whole point of which is to share stories about what happened with people who have done the thing so that you don't get tripped up by them. I'm here with Brad Goss, founder of Vector Tunes and many other fun little projects. Brad, I've known you for a number of years and I really wanted to get you on the show, but I couldn't figure out how to do it because like, well, he's kind of playing around being an international playboy and selling uh, clip art on vector tunes. And that seems to be a pretty automated process. And then uh, I see a post where you shifted from your WordPress site, which had been going for what, three years or something like that? Oh, maybe longer, hmm? seven, seven wow, yeah. seven to uh, shoot you about time then <laughs> to Shopify because of uh, infrastructure needs and volume and servicing the customer and that. And I'm like, aha, I can get him on to talk about this. So uh, I mentioned it to you and you were kind enough to say, yep, let's do it. So here we are. So Brad, tell us a little bit about what Vector Tunes is about and how you got into that business. So Vector Tunes is a clip art company. If you don't know what clip art is, it's basically like cartoon graphics that you can use in Flyers, posters, business cards, web design, any kind of marketing collateral, content marketing, infographics, whatever it is you're creating, t-shirts, you know, that's kind of my, the, the, the cross section of people who buy, buy my stuff. I always say to people, you know, the, the type of person who buys my stuff is all over the place. And mm -hmm. I usually get, I have a phone number on my website and I usually get, I pick up the phone. I'm the one who answers all the calls. I usually get calls from people who are like, I'm making a birthday card and I, and I'm, printing out this piece of clip art and I'm cutting it out and I'm gluing it to the birthday card. Like I get a lot of that. And then I get a lot of professional graphic designers and kind of everybody in between. Um, but I started it on, uh, in, 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 um, 2012 when I hired a girl to, uh, be a full-time cartoonist for me to draw some stuff that I was doing. I was, I was writing a book and I was doing a lot of marketing sales letters and stuff that had cartoons in them. I'm just going to hire somebody to do this for me so that I get exactly what I want. And so I had this person and she, and she was amazing at her job and every, everything I gave her, I loved her work, but I would use it once and then never use it again. And so I wound up with this like art bank, this folder of cartoons that I'd only used in one campaign, you know, maybe a thousand people saw it and like nobody else had seen it. And I'm like, I can I catalog these and maybe see if anybody else wants to buy them. So I had an assistant at the time and she had some free time on the week. And I'm like, take all these images, write titles and descriptions and come up with keyword tags for them. And we're going to load them into WooCommerce on WordPress and we're just going to see what happens. And we did that. And we started making a couple of dollars here and a couple of dollars there. Not a lot of money, but automated from Google. You know, the images would get indexed. People would find them. They'd buy them. They'd download them. Everybody was happy. And that's how the company was born. And it was kind of born out of a, out of just a need to get to, to do something more with the collateral I'd already created. And then, you know, fast forward to now we have six artists full time. Um, I'm about to break 3 million images and um, we'll, we'll talk about how that came to be. And um, uh, you know, the reason why uh, we had to shift gears to Shopify was we literally broke WordPress, like broke it. Awesome. And it was, um, it was difficult because I built it on that platform and I had a lot of workflow. Like I had automated everything. Like mm -hmm. I had the workflow down, dude. Like it was like the art would come in, it would go through our database system. Someone would catalog it and then it went into a folder and boom, it was everything from that point was automated. It was like converted to the different formats, uploaded to WordPress, uh, post the new content to WordPress, and then it would go out to Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and all these other places. And it was all automated. So to change it was hard because it's like, it's all built on this core WordPress foundation and move it over to Shopify is a whole different ball game. So everything had to be broken. And what happened was um, about a year and a half ago, I came up with the idea to merge existing graphics to make new graphics. And that's where the, that's where the scale came from. So we had about 30,000 images in the catalog. And you know, maybe about a thousand of them were full HD backgrounds, like you know, a full scene, like a park or a parking lot 
or something else. And then the rest of them were like individual images with transparent backgrounds. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, a kid on a skateboard. And I always just sold the kid on the skateboard in the parking lot, but I never thought to put the kid in the skateboard in the parking lot. I don't know why it just never hit me. Right. And so, um, I started to look at the, 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 the catalog more holistically about a year and a half ago. And I'm like, okay, if I do this right, you know, and I'll tell you where I got the idea. You know, a lot of people don't like him, but I, 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 I listen to a lot of Grant Cardone audio books and, and, and I love them. I, I, mean, I know he's crazy. I know a lot of people don't like him because he's controversial or whatever, but he's very motivating. One of the things he said, I was listening to, um, be obsessed or be average. I was out for a walk one day and he was like, you got to find your multipliers. He's like, these are the things that are in your business now that, you know, when you find them, you'll wish you had found them years earlier because they're so powerful and they were always there that would multiply your income and you just didn't see it. And I'm like, I'm out for this walk. I got the dog. It's a nice day. I got the headphones on. I'm like, multipliers. What am I? I got a multiplier. I must have a multiplier. What is it? And I'm like, I got this huge graphics asset just going through my head. And then boom, it hit me. Hmm. What if I took, and cause I had been doing it already to create ads. I was taking weird images. I'd put like this, you know, Cyclops in the middle of a city street and I'd put a Facebook ad up and people would click on it and they'd be right. like, you know, why would I need this image? And so I already had the, you know, I was already kind of doing it, mixing and matching stuff, but I never thought, what if I did this on mass? Like, what if I just did everything? Hmm. And so I did the math one day. I sat down, I came home after that walk and I, I started to do the math and I looked at all the products and I was like, well, if I just applied each one of these images to each one of these backgrounds, I'd have about 30 million images. Wow. And I thought, well, they may not all fit well together, yeah. right? Like we don't need a picture of a dragon in a shopping mall, or maybe we do. You know, and, and, and so I hired a guy in the Philippines, uh, you know, a junior graphic designer, like just, you just had to know how to use Adobe Illustrator, like 101. Because all you had to do was I would give him the background and the image in a folder. And all he had to do was open the background, open the image, put the image in the right spot in the background, resize it accordingly and save it. And so, he, so, you know, I went from an average of about 100 images, new images a week, to this guy was doing 400 images a day. Whoa. And so quickly started to scale the number of images in my catalog from, you know, like hyper, hyper uh, scale now, like what I thought was hyper scale. And it was going on for about uh, two months. And as this happens, you know, you know this, you have, you've hired a lot of outsourced you know, staff, sometimes they just burn out and he was definitely on a burnout job. I mean, you know, doing 400 op open 400 images and, and, you know, save them a day. That's, that's a burnout job. And he burned out and he quit. And he just went off the radar, stopped working. And I, um, <clears throat> I went into like a bit of a weirdness where I was like, oh, shit, I got to hire somebody else and, you know, train them and go through the whole process again. And I kind of just let it sit for a little while. Because in the back of my mind, I knew there had to be a better way, you know? And it took me, I actually procrastinated this for six months. This is my, I'm, this is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an expert procrastinator. So I procrastinated for six months. And then one day it hit me that this could be automated. I don't need a guy. And if I say to myself, okay, if I figure out a new way to do this where I don't need someone to eyeball it, where I could always have the image in the, in the background together and they would fit, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the images don't go together because th that's what makes them fun, right? What, maybe somebody somewhere, maybe one person in the next 10 years needs a picture of a dragon in a parking lot or needs a picture of, um, you know, uh, a guy on a kayak in the middle of a china shop. like. Maybe not, but it, if I can automate it and it costs right. me zero, like, or, or next, like fractions of a cent to create that image, why not just create right. it? So I built this bot that creates, uh, on a single server, creates about 30,000 images a day. <laughs> so I went from 400 a day to 30,000 a day and boom, I broke WordPress. I just broke it. Like it just said... No more, you know, we're going to slow uploading. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna slow everything down to a crawl. And then it was like, okay, I went to my hosting company. And I'm like, hey, guys, I broke WordPress, you know, quote me on a better server with more RAM and more blah, 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 and CPU and gigahertz and whatever. 
And of course, they're happy. The hosting company, whenever you tell them to break WordPress, they're like, yeah, let's do this. And so they gave me a quote on a new server. And I broke the new server. In like a month, I broke the new mm -hmm. server. I'm like, guys, this isn't working. I need something more robust. And they're like, you're already on the fastest server. And we can build you a, you know, a new architecture where we put the database over here. And we put the, this over here. And I'm like, okay, well, can you tell me? You know, I'm at, I, I, at this point, I was at about 150,000 images when I when I'd really broken WordPress. And I was like, can you tell me now that we've done this, hundred, we have 150,000 images on WordPress and we've broken it on this server. If we break this server up into three pieces, can anybody tell me how many images it's going to take before I break the new infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Nobody could give me a number. And I get that. They're, they're not, you know, they're not able to give me that. But I said, okay, let's be... Let's just use napkin math and let's say, okay, we're breaking one server into three. So let's say now from 150,000 images, I'm going to go to 450,000 images, which at 30,000 images a day is not going to take very long. Yeah. What happens then? And they said, well, then, then we're going to have to revisit everything. We're going to have to reinvent everything. We, you know, we may have to change your CMS from WordPress to something else. I'm like, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So there is a ceiling for WordPress yeah. and I've found it. And if I, there's only so many, there's only so many parts I can break this into before it breaks. And they said, yeah. And then somebody suggested to me, well, what you need to do is you need to move to WP Engine because they have an unlimited scaling platform and, you know, mix Cloudflare so that you've got the, the, you know, they're serving the bandwidth and the, and the edge delivery, you know, the, the, the whole, like, you know, I'm in Toledo, Ohio, and I get the Toledo server and it serves to me quicker or whatever. So like you go WP Engine and Cloudflare, you'll be able to scale higher. So go to WP. I moved my whole website over to WP Engine, and it's crawling. And I so I called WP Engine. WP Engine is like the worst for scale because they don't tell you anything. They're like, well, we don't tell you what kind of server you're on. We don't tell you how much RAM you have. We don't tell you if it's an SSD or a traditional. You know, they don't tell you anything. They're just like, this plan will work with this traffic, and but they're, they're really kind of sketchy about the details. So I'm on WP Engine, I broke WP Engine, and they basically said to me, well, you know, if, if you want to fix this, it's going to cost you about 20 grand a month. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me at all that, you know, I'm going to go from like $1,000 a month in server costs to 20 grand to, to, just to get to that next level. Right, which will probably break as well. Which is going to break, yeah. exactly. So um, I, I, I left it there for too long and because I, I was stuck and I just, I, so I stopped innovating again. I'm like, Oh, I guess I got to stop creating these bot graphics. And so a few months went by, I stuck with WP engine and, and then I, and then I, um, and then, it, and then it bothered me one morning. I woke up and I was like, why, why am I sitting still on this? I need to find a solution. And so I Googled how to scale WordPress, uh, WooCommerce to 1 million plus products. And boom, I found the guy. He had a, he'd done a talk at WordCamp. The whole video was up there scaling WooCommerce beyond 1 million products. He had this whole server architecture mapped out in his slides. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's got the answer. <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm techie to, enough to be dangerous, but not enough to build server architecture, right? So I just went straight, you know, the, the beauty of Google is I, I Googled him, watched his talk. He laid out his entire, <laughs> mapped out the whole thing. And then what are, like people are like people are always like oh I don't want to give away my best information he gave away his best information and what did I do I called him I'm like how much to do it for him right and so he gave me a price I can't even remember what I paid him it was a lot of money and he set up the architecture for me and it fucking broke like as soon as he set it up it broke <laughs> and I'm like you told me you could scale this beyond one million products and he's like well I didn't know that you had blah 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 and this and that I'm like you gotta be kidding me you, you represented yourself as someone who could do this. So he moved me to DigitalOcean. Hmm. And so he set up droplets on DigitalOcean. He had done the whole triple, you know, file server, database server, you know, Cloudflare, the whole, he had done that whole like sort of separating it out thing, but it was still unable to handle the flow. And then this guy would just disappear for weeks on end. He would hmm. get depressed and he wouldn't return my Skypes or calls for like three weeks and the site would go down and I'd freak out. And, and you know, I, I just hit so many walls with WordPress. And then I had this one consulting company contact me and they quoted me are you ready for this they quoted me 120 grand mm -hmm. to set up 
a new WordPress architecture on a new server. And I'm like, how many times am I going to date this girl who keeps cheating on me? <laughs> this is basically what's happening here, right? So I took a step back and I started to research other solutions. You know, who can handle more than a million products? And it kept coming back to Shopify. And I was concerned. I didn't think that I, I thought, you know, because Shopify had on their website unlimited products. And, you know, I've been in this business long enough to know that when people say unlimited, they don't mean unlimited. And I've been the guy that breaks the, I'm the guy that breaks it every time, you know, unlimited bandwidth. Oh, really? Watch me. Watch how quickly I break that. And, you know, like, like HostGator, $5 a month, unlimited traffic. Right. Now, right. now I'll, I'll break it in a day. And I'll see what, and I'll, and you'll be calling me saying, uh, Mr. Goss, you've, uh, you've, you've uh, uh, beat up your allocation. What allocation? You said it was unlimited. So I had a call with Shopify at the enterprise level. I had a call with them and I said, you know, I want to move, but I'm going to have like 20 million products. Can you handle this? And they're like, we need to get an engineer on the phone. We need to make sure that we can do this. Hmm. And I got on the phone with an engineer and he said, look, you know, our, our biggest, our biggest, um, customer right now has about 1.4 million products and they said and we're able to handle it we think we can handle whatever you give us you need to you know you need to break things into the right categories you need to do things properly and I said okay and they said we, we can handle this and I'm like and you're not going to come to me and tell me you need stupid money later and they're like well no because we're going to charge you the monthly fee and then we also get a piece of your transaction so ah. we, we can we can be your scale partner and I'm like okay so what I did was this was in um this was in July. And I said, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the existing site on WordPress, and then I'm gonna set up a Shopify site, clipartscenes.vectortunes.com, and I'm gonna put all the derivative bot created content up on Shopify. And they, they, the funny thing is, they told me on the phone, this was really interesting, they told me on the phone, our $2,000 a month plan for enterprise is exactly the same as our $79 a month plan. The only difference between the two is you pay a little bit less per transaction and you get priority support. That's it. Those are the only differences. So I'm like, so what you're telling me is I could test you guys out on 2 million products for $79 a month. And they said, yeah. Huh. Okay. So I set up a $79 a month account. And I, I, I built this, this architecture to post the, you know, about 20 to 30,000 images a day on Shopify. And um, I got 2.7 million products up on Shopify. And I had about, um, I've had about 100, 150,000 on WordPress. And Shopify was handling it. And the funny thing is, dude, people were buying these images. I made them 20 bucks. Right. And it was like, people were buying the most obscure images. Oh my God, I can't believe you had the yoga instructor on the train tracks that I was looking for. I'm like, okay. You know, and like someone, someone doing yoga in the middle of a train track. And so people were finding the images and buying them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is actually working. Like this is, this was like creating vector tunes all over again. I was, I was getting these trickle in, you know, SEO kind of sales. And, um, uh, so for, for the last like several months, that was what I was doing was just, beating up Shopify to see if they, if they had a breaking point and they didn't hmm. like, I got 2.7 million products up there and they didn't break. So I'm like, okay, well, site's still running quickly. And you know, I'm, I can't really add to what I'm doing on this other side here. So why don't I move it all to Shopify so that I can properly scan? I was going to I had to consolidate the two. So uh, on February 4th, I, uh, I shut down uh, the VectorTunes WordPress server. I took, all the, I took all the products off of it, moved them over to the Shopify server, which was a, on a subdomain. And then I had to um, get rid of the subdomain on Shopify and delete the WordPress site. Mm -hmm. And what happened was all, when I had it up on Woo, WooCommerce, my URL structure was you know, vectortunes.com slash product slash and then the product handle. But on Shopify, it's products with an S. And there's no hmm. getting around it. It will not change it for you. So one of the reasons why I kind of procrastinated that was that I knew that they, Shopify, was going to, um, uh, I was going to have to redirect every single, con every single product. I had all these great Google placements. 
every page on my website had to be redirected. So on February 4th, and I'm suffering from it, I had to, I had to set up 3 million redirects, 301 redirects for Google. And it was all done through, it was done through like 11 wildcard rules that I had to create. Mm-hmm. And so today, my Google traffic has dropped dramatically, like from four to 5,000 visitors a day down to 600 visitors a day from Google. And I, I expected this was going to happen. This, this is like I planned for this, but it still sucks when it happens. So I'm, my traffic's down, my sales are down, everything's down, while Google basically just tears down all their, their index of pages of mine and rebuilds them. Because all 2.7 million images that I put up on Shopify that were indexed, they also had to be redirected to the new, oh. you know, because they were on a subdomain of vector tunes, mm-hmm. I need to move all to the main domain. So everything got redirected. All the Shopify and all the WordPress all went into one new work, new Shopify site and everything redirected back. And it's, it's working. You know, the redirects are working and Google is re-indexing the redirects, but I had so many long tail placements that it's going to take a while to get them back. And, and that's where I'm at today. And, and so now I'm on Shopify. Uh, as we speak right now, I'm posting about 20 to 30,000 new images a day to Shopify. Uh, I think I'm about to break, I'm about to break 3 million products. I'm like right on the cusp of 3 million products. On Shopify. Well, that and was I got a lot. 30 million, uh, 30 million to put up. That was, I, I'm stunned. I'm still stunned by what you've just said, because there's, there's so much into it. And my mind is going like, Oh my gosh, like, what about like all these combinations and permutations, right? And yep. that is what the multiplier was all because yep. of a Grant Cardone ebook or audio book. And uh, that automated process that you had, were forced to come up with because like your first cap was your artist, then WordPress and hosting. And now it's getting Google back to being your friend. But each image that you produce with this automated process is tagged and, and classified. And it's another way for people to find you right? Each, yep. each way. So you're adding to the big net, basically. You're adding another inch to your net in, in yep. its size. So that's fascinating to me. So that's what I was thinking about like 10 minutes ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> when you started off with that. And I, I'm still like, wow, that's amazing because you get a core of content that's there. You add the 30,000 images that you started out with. And then, you, you know, the thought is, well, what happens if I mix this with that? Well, I get a new image. And as you said, Google doesn't care what it is exactly. It doesn't even care that it makes sense or not, that image, right? Visually, right? Who cares? It's a keyboard on a train. Okay, great. You know, but somebody out there might type that in to Google and up it comes on the SEO and then you've got another buyer. And they, and they may not even buy that image. They may just come in to the site because of that. When they land on that image. Yeah they get presented with the image and then they also get presented below in the description mm-hmm. with here's the images we use to make that image with links to those images. So they get that image. They're like, well, I don't really want the keyboard on the train. I just want the train. Right. Boom. They click through, they get the train. Right. So, so we give them that, we give them that link back to the actual source content that was used right. to create it. Uh, that's all part of the, of the bot generated process. And um, like when I hired the guy to do it, what I did was I, I kind of built the bot and what I did was I built the bot in such a way where the bot would present me with images and I would click yes or no, yes or no. And I would just sit there in front of the TV, watch the TV and I'd just be like, yes, 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 no, yes, 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 no. And then, and then the, the script would take the two images and put them in a folder for the guy and then the guy would merge them together and then I would know, I would be able to tie it back to the database that I created so that they could get posted. So it just, I just realized why am I clicking yes, no? Right. Just, just yes, do it. everything. Because yes. the incremental cost to producing one more freaking image is next to nothing. Well, it was cheaper. Yeah. It was actually cheaper yes. to, to automate to the it. whole thing. Yes. Then have everything. you sit there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I was the bottleneck. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just had to remove myself. Isn't that crazy, folks? It was easier for Brad to have content created than not. And it did more for him to create it because now it's another tag. Right. It's another way for people to find you in Google. It's it's really crazy. And then the 
search process for finding somebody who could actually do what they said they could do and help you and the incremental cost of getting a little bit better, right? Break, boom, now it's another 20 grand. Break, boom, now we want 120,000. And then finally, when you find somebody who actually has the know-how, the cost is like whatever, right? Yep. Your base cost per month was under $100, and then they just charged you uh, per transaction. So that, we talk about software as a service a lot on this podcast. The way you measure and bill your customers is so important. Instead of a $2,000 a month flat fee, let's say, they're charging Brad $79 plus a piece of the action whenever he sells something. Yeah. And, and still more than PayPal would have taken or any other right. Stripe or anybody else would have taken. They just get to be Stripe and my host. <laughs> um, you know, and, and, it, and it worked. Like, you know, they're so far you know, knock on wood, it continues to work. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I may get to a place where Shopify engineers are calling me and going, whoa, Brad, 30 million images. We just, we don't know what to do right. here. But, you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm with the right partner to do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, the other thing about Shopify is I was an investor in the company. I, I mm -hmm. owned shares in Shopify. And, you know, here I am, trying to build this WordPress architecture, but my personal stock portfolio includes Shopify. Why am I investing in this company and not a customer? So, you know, I even said to them when I called them, I'm like, I'm an investor in your company. I don't know why I'm not a customer. Like it makes no sense to me at all that I think you're good enough to buy your stock, but not good enough to put my mission critical website on. And so when I finally consolidated those two things, I realized, you know, Shopify is also a Canadian company, which I like because I'm in Canada. You know, they have an office in Toronto. I've gone down to their offices and, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a nice feeling to know they're within arm's reach where WordPress is this free right. open source content management system that nobody's going to help me if I break it. Right. Yeah. It's just a bunch of disconnected so-called experts out there yeah. uh, who are not accountable to anything really. No. Whereas if you're inside a company, now you've got focus. Yeah. What would you suggest to folks who are in a somewhat similar situation of running up against the limits of what their infrastructure can do, but they're looking for that partner? Did you learn anything? And the answer may be no, that would help you speed up that process of finding the right partner next time. I, you know what? So no, I didn't learn anything because I mean, I guess I learned, I learned to, to look outside my existing box, you mm -hmm. know, for the answers because for the longest time it was just like well how do we make wordpress better how to scale right. it how do we, we create the right hardware platform for it to grow and then i realized okay I've, now i've just i've really broken this but you know my biggest enemy is procrastination like whenever i do something like that i usually end up sitting around for a little too long waiting for the for the the solution to present itself either it, within my own mind or from the outside right. and i always kind of knew it was shopify the, the funny thing is, dude, seven years ago when I launched the product, when I launched the business, I considered Shopify as an option. And then I ruled them out because I never saw myself having 3 million images. I always saw myself being right. this like boutique stock graphics company. Right. And then it just became its own, it became its own beast over, over time. And then I realized, okay, you know, I am going to have millions of images. And, and, and so I, I didn't really learn anything. The only thing I learned Okay, the lesson that I got out of it was move. I've always been someone who moves fast and break th breaks things, but move faster and break more. That was what I, that, if I were to do it again, I would have moved to Shopify sooner, like a year ago mm -hmm. when this was all starting. Um, I, would, I would have ripped the band aid off sooner than later. And I, I waited too long. And, you know, I'm definitely suffering because I waited too long and I'm dealing with a lot of growing pains like, my old archives of orders are not up. And so customers who have been customers for years are like, where's my archives of orders? I need to download a product I bought two years ago and I didn't keep it on my hard drive. I'm like, it's not up yet. <laughs> like I'm literally setting up a, an archive of the WordPress site for the old customers so they can go log in and get their old stuff. Okay. Because I couldn't move the orders over. Patchwork. I couldn't move, you know, I couldn't move the customers over. I could, yeah. I could only move the products. <clears throat> There's got to be a customer. Yeah. You know, there's got to be a way to do that. So you database programmers listening who know how to solve this problem, go talk to Brad. <laughs> there are people that, there are people that had options to solve it, but it wasn't going to work the way I needed it to because mm. of the way that they did. Because so the thing is, is that Shopify is built 
is not built for digital products. I'm in the digital product business and Shopify, not friendly. Hmm. They don't have anything automated for, 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 for digital products. So their whole thing is built on you shipping out these orders. And so when I wanted to import all my digital product orders, they were going to import them, but they didn't have any way for me to give them the downloads. Okay. So I had to hire an outside developer to create that for me, but he could only create it on new orders. He couldn't create it on archives. It was just a way he, he had to use the, the trigger of a new order to create the download and like couldn't pull it from old orders. And it was like this whole thing where I was like, all right, just forget that. Just do the new part. You know, mm-hmm. eventually you just get to a point where you're like, screw it. I don't care. Like, I really don't even care. Like if the customers come to me and they're like, I bought something from you two years ago and I, I didn't keep it. Too bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go find the order and I'll get it for them. But you know, like if, if I get to a place where I'm like frustrated with building this archive and they just can't get their old orders easily, I'll just hire a support person to go in and look through the database and find the old order and email them the product manual, you know, because at some point I'll give up on, on trying to make that part of it work because the new part is more important. Mm-hmm. So you were, so you were willing to move to a platform that dealt mostly in the sale of physical goods. Uh, and that's their delivery system. They would just have a picture of the thing and you would buy it. Uh, and so you had to solve that problem. See, the, the, one of the big uh, realizations that I've had listening to you by, by 15 minutes in was realizing, oh, crap, this problem was much bigger than I thought originally. I was like, oh, Brad moved to platform. That's nice. You know, <laughs> right? I did not understand all the stuff that went into it. And you explain it and I totally get it. Right. Uh, you know, I've got enough technology to probably less than you uh, to get it, but I do know what's going on. And to hear about all these little tweaky little things that weren't included and needed to be fixed. And you had to be willing to throw out the technology that you had used until now. I think that's a key thing, right? Being willing to just start over. Uh, there's a, there's a saying in the operations management training that I had over 20 years ago, technology is glue, apply it last. Otherwise, you're just going to get sticky fingers. <laughs> but be willing to throw it all out and start over again. And also, another thing that I got from what you had to say in your answer to my question was keep looking. Don't, don't just go, okay, that's it. I've thrown up my hands because you have not seen everything. And in no. fact, you're probably trapped in, in your own little box with the blinders on of, oh, <clears throat> I have to use WordPress or I've exhausted every possibility. Yeah, right. Yeah. We, Shopify we was set up. Shopify was set up to handle digital products, hmm. but on a small scale. So the mm-hmm. only way it would work is if I went into each product and clicked choose file, upload the file, right. save the product. And there was no way their API automated it. Hmm. It was not available to me. Yeah. So you couldn't and just upload a database somewhere and then link it all out. Yeah. Automatically. I had like four terabytes of, of data on Amazon AWS. Right. So I, I had it all on AWS and I'm like, look, I need it. I need a programmer who can take a look at my product. You know, we put some, we, we bury some code in the database and yeah. from that code, take a look at that code from that product when the sale happens and go and fetch that particular file from the AWS server and give it to the customer. Mm-hmm. That was the, that was the thing. And actually the, the funny thing is, so the guy I hired India guy, you know, up work, whatever, you know, and, and he said to me, he, I want, my original plan was, because we give people a vector PDF, we give them a PNG, we give them a JPEG, you know, we right. usually try and give them a variety of file formats. And I said to the guy, I was like, look, what I really want to do is I want to build an image magic server that takes the PDF file from AWS and you can, the customer can say, well, I want it as a JPEG. And then they, when they click download, they get the JPEG, converts it in real time, they get the JPEG. And he's like, yeah, I can build that. So I'm like, okay, phase one, is download the file directly from AWS. Phase two is we'll convert it because I've also worked with enough outsourced programmers to know these guys quit on a dime. Like they will quit in a second if they get, if they get in over their heads. So he's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we built the download part and then I'm like, okay, phase two, we opened up phase two. What happened? He quit. <laughs> so I never got the, the real time conversion script. And that was part of the whole, it was like, okay, the customers can't just take a PDF. They want some of them need the PNG and they don't know how to convert it. And it's going to create a support hassle for us. If we have to tell them how to convert it every time. Didn't happen. So now I'm stuck. I got this database. I got this, I got this, this system that delivers downloads, but only one file 
per product. So eventually I had to just shift gears and say, okay, well now I'm just going to build a PC server that takes all my files and converts them to the different formats and makes a readme file to tell them how to convert it to other formats using a free, a free site called cloud convert mm -hmm. and zip them all together as one file. So that when the customer buys a product to get a zip file. And so we changed the whole thing to do that. And now that's, so that's where it, it's not ideal, but it works. Yeah. So it's, you know, I, I want our listeners to understand the technical knowledge that you have to have, the level of involvement. Um, and I think, you know, based on what I see on your Facebook activity, you spend a fair amount of time away from your business as well. You're not on the job 24 seven, but, mm -hmm. uh, but when you're in it, you really are in it. And you're very interested in the step-by-step -step processes, which are the key things that I take care of in, in my business with our clients. Uh, and, and exactly how things are automated because you can't leave that stuff to, well, we'll just figure it out because right. look at the user experience, right? If you, if you got wishy-washy on that file download side of things, right? You, your, your uh, support ticket thing would fill up real fast with yep. people going, I wanted a JPEG and I got a PNG and what do I do now? And, and yeah. For most of us, it's like, we'll just go get a free conversion site and do it there, but they don't know that. And so it causes you a hassle. So you have to get very clear on, okay, specifically, how am I going to solve this issue? And the answer is put it all in a zip file with a readme and <laughs> get it out yeah. there yes. uh, to every customer. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Um, and just how I, I there's, a, there's a few programmer type friends of mine that I think I'll connect with you uh, after the show and see, just get them on your radar and maybe you can make use of them sometime. Who are operating at the level that we're talking about here is, is, right. is what I've picked out of it. I'm like, wow, Brad's problems here are very specific, right? To do with image hosting and delivery and how can people find you, right? How are they organized and stored? And, and again, before this interview, I had a very simplistic vision in my head of how this stuff worked because I'm not immersed in it, right? And I was wrong, right? 10 minutes of listening to you and I'm like, oh, oh wow. Oh, this is quite a bit more complicated. It's not rocket science, but it's more complicated than you think. It's not just, okay, I'm gonna put up a WordPress website and stick a bunch of images up in the media directory or something like that, right? Or up so on is, Amazon. There's my, there's my count to see where it says cartoons, 2.81 mm. million images. Yep. Wow. Cause that's where I'm at in Shopify <laughs> right now. There. I'm about to break, I'm going to break 3 million in the next, probably before the month is over. Awesome. Well, I'm very curious to see whether they can handle it and what happens and, you know, what other solutions you come up with. Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they, you know, you're always interested in uh, kind of igniting business ideas that, that are a fit with you and, and also maybe people want to buy a, a kooky cartoon because that's what VectorTunes is specialized in, right? I, even though you've got all these images, it's kind of the weird stuff, right? It's not, it's not your garden variety vector graphics or something like that. So how can people get a hold of you? Where should they go? Uh, just visit us at vectortunes.com. Like not okay. tunes like music, but cartoons tunes, like T-O-O-N-S. Um, a lot of people screw that up for some reason. Even people who've known me for a long time were like, I, I emailed you and it, did, it, didn't, it, it didn't go anywhere. I'm like, well, what'd you send it to? And they said, vector tunes, T-U-N-E-S. I'm like, well, I'll let you know when I get into the music business. All right. <laughs> um, you know, or Facebook is probably the other best way to reach me. It's just Brad Goss on Facebook. Um, right. you know. If you see sarcasm, you know you're in the right place because you've <laughs> yeah. been posting some funny meme type stuff. There's a lot of sarcasm on my Facebook. Getting, uh, getting a rise out of people. Awesome. Well, my guest today has been Brad Goss, owner of Vector Tunes. And we've been discussing the wild story. Uh, from, a, from a Grant Cardone audiobook of all places, giving you the, the thought. Uh, which is very interesting. I have no idea how I'm going to apply that in my business yet, actually. Uh, but I'm going to start thinking about it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Jason.